Hey, it's Merrill, and uh, today I'm going to teach you how to draw a cat uh, using colored pencils. Um, so, uh, we're going to start out uh, by simply uh, going to uh, do the head first. So, we're going to do a circle for that. Keep the shapes nice and simple. Keep them loose for the beginning. And for the body, going to do an oval. So really, we can start with two basic shapes. Might change this a little bit, but I'm going to make a little tail right over in here. So really, it's kind of like a shape of a, uh, a jar, I guess. Um, and you can kind of see the top of the jar right over in here. Um, from here, we are going to add ears, and those are just triangles, that's it. So triangle over here, and triangle over here, nice and simple. And as we draw, we will go from the simple to the complex. And now that I have these basic shapes in, I'm going to try to make them a little bit more complex. There's a trapezoid that happens right over in here. And the cat's eyes are going to go on the other side. And the cat's eyes are very oval shaped. Cats have some great expressions, so if you go too big on the eyes, that's alright. Just have fun with it. I'm trying to make sure that the two sides are symmetrical. And they are. Um, they have very different pupils than we do. And it's an oval within an oval. So I made two ovals within an oval. And for the nose, nose is very triangular. It's almost like home plate if you're a baseball fan. So you have this, and then they have this shape in here for the nostrils. So let's try to do the same thing on the other side. Or you know what? It's like a teardrop shape. And here. So yeah, if you're a baseball fan, it's like home plate. Now let me make sure that the two sides are very symmetrical. For the mouth, there's a line that goes straight down. And then there's a triangle. And I'm going to make dots for the whiskers. And now we have this region in here filled in. So let's start to worry about um, the shape of the head, and then we can go from there. So I'm going to create a line up here, right in between the ears, and it's usually a soft line, right over in here. I'm 
I'm going to make the ears a little bit fuller. When you're drawing a kitten, um, the ears are kind of disproportional to the size of the head. And um, I'm going to make this one a kitten. There's the kitty. And again, making sure everything is symmetrical. You could put a collar on them if you want. If something's not symmetrical, you erase. All right, I don't want him to be a very stiff cat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have him lean a little bit. So this shoulder is going to come out. And we're going to make a line for a paw right over in here. Now when you're drawing um, cat's paws, um, the younger the cat, the more disproportional that it would seem to the size of the body. So we're going to give them some pretty big paws. And I'm just filling in the shape right now. I'm going to put the details in a little bit later. And the other paw is going to be starting right about here. And we're going to have them close together. Other line goes right about here. They're about even in size. You can make slight adjustments if you want. And I'm actually going to have the body stop here. I'm just going to start doing the texture of fur. I'm going to make them a little fatter. Every cat I've ever had has been pretty well fed, so might as well make this guy a little bit fatter. They're more cute that way, I think. So we have this, and I'm just going to actually go a little bit further out, because over here we're going to put another paw. Yeah, so it's going to abruptly stop right about here, and we're going to have a little paw sticking out. Sorry if that confused you. I know I had to erase there. And this will continue over here. And the tail, let's move that up a little bit. And let's erase this down here. Tail is going to be higher. Right about there. And it's further back, so it might seem a little bit small for the body. That's okay. All right, so we have cat shape here. Let's just do some simple adjustments before we get into the colored pencil. Going to do the cat fingers there. And they actually have five, uh, I mean the fifth one is a little bit further up, um, but it's almost like five fingers. They got much cooler nails than us though. Okay. And the only thing that's giving me trouble is this paw back here. So let me take a good look at it. I'm going to move it up a little bit more. Uh, 
it'll make more sense once I start coloring. All right, it's okay to leave it loose at this point. Um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just put in some random uh, shapes that I can color. Male cats have a more distinct pattern. Um, I think this is going to be a female cat. I'm just doing guidelines. Whatever you do on one side, make sure that you do on the other side. So whatever I put here, I'm going to try to do the same thing on the other side. It's okay if it doesn't fully work that way. And let's make a mirror image of that. It's okay to keep these lines loose. It's almost like taking notes. You know, you're leaving yourself notes for the shading that you're going to do. But it doesn't have to exactly be just as you have it. So now we're going to go extreme close up on the cat. And I'm going to use these colors for the eyes. Uh, the colors are black. Um, I'm going to use the green is uh, yellow green. Um, and this is, uh, they're all Prismacolors. Um, Lake blue. Uh, which kind of looks like a tinted ultramarine blue. I'm more of a painter. And the cool gray 10, this isn't a white, um, but, you know, for the highlights of the eye. So first, let's take a look. And uh, it gets very, very dark uh, in the um, pupils of the cat's eye. I'm going to go right in with the black. And I'm going to fill in the ovals. All right, so those are um, pretty even on both sides. Now I'm going to look at the outside. And I'm going to make sure that these are symmetrical. So you want to have the shape of the eye correct. I'm going to do the inside because there's a different edge on the inside than there is on the outside. And this is really important when doing the cat's eyes. It's a thicker line on the inside and it gets thinner on the outside. So you're not going to press as hard. That's not something that I learned in school. That's just observation. Uh, one of the most important skills you can have as an artist. Um, okay, so I'm going to go in with that blue. I'm going to do a light hatching of blue. Very light. Like so. Now I'm going to go in with the green. And again, if you're comparing the pressures between the two, um, I'm pressing a lot harder with the black. And I'm going to go in with the gray and start marking out those highlight areas. And then I could go back in. All right, so the inside is done. Now, I'm going to take my eraser, I'm going to erase the lines around it, 
just on top. And right from the black, I'm going to use some pink. And this color is, uh, it's called Rose. It's a Prismacolor colored pencil, colored pencil color. Same thing on this side. And I'm going to use that same color on the nose. Gonna go back in with that black, but only in the nostril area. Fill in the nostrils with black. Make sure whatever you do on one side, you do the same thing on the other side. For the mouth, I'm going to erase my pencil lines, and I'm going to go straight down with the pink. And as it goes further out, it's going to get lighter. And the area around the mouth is also a little bit pink. So the cat's kind of got a, the joker thing going on. Might be an easy way to remember it. And I could go back in with that black. Okay, um, now going to start to put the color in, and this is a little bit tricky. I had an orange cat growing up, so kind of want the cat to be orange, but I'm going to mix um, the colors orange and um, uh, terra de sienna, um, earth sienna, uh, if you will, and I'm going to start off up here. Actually, no, I'm going to start off by erasing. And you don't want to erase all the way, but, you know, just so that you can see. And I'm going to put some nice light lines where those stripes were. I'm going to replace them. And in here, just going to mix this in. This is going to be my main color, the um, Sienna Brown. I'm going to go in a little bit with the orange. But basically orange and brown. And I'm going to go back in with the gray color. Actually, I'm going to take warm gray 20 and go in the whiter areas in here because we don't want it to be white. We want it to be the light gray. So let me zoom out.
Now we're going to take a look at the ears. I'm going to go right in with the pink. Do some hatching with the pink. And whatever I do on one side, I'm going to do on the other. Again, I'm going to use these two colors together, orange and sienna brown. using warm gray 70 I'm gonna keep changing the edge that's one of the ways that you can make it seem like the cat is not outlined I'm gonna use this for the shadowing color black is too dark but I'm going to put this right on top of the pink. And together it's going to be kind of a reddish color. The gray and the pink kind of make it look uh, crimson-like. but you want to make sure that you still can see the pink. Um, the gray can be overpowering. But when you merge those two together, you get a nice shadow color for the ears. And if you notice, I'm using this Sienna Brown like over and over and over again. So this color is going to be a in a little bit of everything. And some more of that orange. Even in the nose, I'm going to use some of that brown. And then I'm going to put another layer of pink right on top. And this cool gray 10, I'm going to use as a blending color. So for this drawing, um, the warm gray 70 is going to be uh, very important. Uh, it's a color that I'm going to use uh, to define, not necessarily outline, but uh, to define. We don't want it to just be a dark mark that encircles. We want it to kind of blend in as well, anywhere that there's a dark area. So in the ears here, um, I used it down here in the neck um, to separate uh, this fold of fur um, that separates the head from the body of the cat. Um, also I'm going to do indications of um, fur on the edge but again we're trying not to outline. We want it to be connected and we want it to give the texture of fur um, but we're not outlining. If we outline we lose the effect.
as I get to the chest, I am, uh, well, I'm going to give my cat some chest hair. There we go. Um, I'm following the direction that the fur goes, parts in the middle, and it sweeps out to um, where uh, the markations for the stripes were. And you could leave this as a stylized point. Then I'm going to take um, the color that we were using to make the stripes. And it's fur, so it's not going to be a perfect straight line. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill in the rest of the stripes. Now the edge for the fur, I'm going to redefine. I'm not going to make it straight. And anywhere that I like the lines that I put, I'm going to keep them. If not, I'm going to change them. But I'm going for line quality here. And with the gray, uh, the warm gray 70, we can do some real um, texturizing, if that makes sense. We can put the uh, individual um, hairs in. So that's what I'm going to use for that. I'm going to round out the head by putting some of the um, the reddish color in around the neck. I'm not going to press very hard. I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm not going to press too hard because eventually I'm going to put some white back in. And if you want to darken it um, or uh, change the contrast, you could use this gray 70 as well. Yeah, so I'm strengthening these uh, stripes on this side and on this side. So I'm going to put a line of the gray 70 first. And then I'm going to put um, the uh, sienna brown color. To me the trick is always slowly building up tones um, until you're satisfied. You know, you make sure the placement is right if it's not, you change it, and then you slowly develop it. Anytime you rush or go too, too quick, uh, bad things happen. I um, wanted to talk to you about the properties of colored pencil and once you go down hard, once you press hard, uh, there's little you can do. You can go over it with paint, um, you know, if you really want to make a change. But uh, in terms of mixability, once you press down really hard, um, you know, it's tough to make those changes. So you got to do some planning, um, I suppose more planning than you would, um, say, if you painted. Uh, but, uh, you know, you are able to be really accurate with this medium. So it has its pros and it has its cons, um, as does every artistic medium.
but um, you know you choose the tools that you think will help you and you uh, you evolve your techniques with them and uh, colored pencil is definitely um, a very fun one to do my recommendation if you're going to invest in a set is uh, definitely Prismacolor um, you know but you know there's other options out there of course yeah, but my set are Prismacolors um, I'll put a link in the description I'm happy with them around the legs I'm gonna do some shading and here's where it gets dark I'm gonna put some additional stripes on the legs Put some hints of the color here. And the richer orange I could hint at. If I didn't tone it down, this uh, color would be too bright, this orange. And this is like construction worker orange. No cat is construction worker orange. Just saying. So I tone it down with the gray. I'm going to put some whiskers on the guy. I'm going to take it off the side. Um, I put the whiskers on last. You know, only after I'm pretty much done with the face. And what I'm doing with the black colored pencil is I'm going to outline the whiskers. In color pencil, black is the color of uh, definition. So if you really want to define something, you use black. Um, but you can also use those grays. And I'm using a color uh, beige. It's going to be the uh, paw color for the cats. I'm going to do another layer of beige um, over this area here to tie it in. And also over here and over here. I mean, colored pencil is different than paint in that you do the mixing right on the surface. And you have to have some uh, knowledge of the materials, uh, meaning that you have to have used them before. Um, well, I mean, you have to use them for a first time, of course, but um, the more you use them, the more you get to know their tendencies. And you see I have some hair that's uh, blended in in here and some hair that's, um, you know, really separate. I kind of want to go through both extremes. This side I've used more black on than this side. And I kind of want to um, redefine.
Um, these are called Prismacolor Art Sticks. I use them to do some blending. And you could also get some, uh, you know, nice strong color from them too. They go right on top, um, or they can go under. I like using them on top. If you want to lighten an area, you can do that. So I'm adding the highlights back in in some areas. Yeah, and I really like these for blending. I'm going to redefine the leg a little bit more. Also darken this stripe. I want them to have one more stripe. So I'll put a little bit of uh, gray in. Then I'm going to take the uh, uh, burnt uh, ochre color, the brown. Put it in. Just continue this stripe a little bit more. Just for styling, I am adding some uh, ultramarine blue onto the uh, right hand side. That's one of the cool things you could do with colored pencils. Um, I'm putting kind of a reflection of the sky into the side. Uh, into this side, that is. And it just gives it a little bit more depth. Experiment, you have fun. That's what it's all about. going to use some red underneath the foot here to create a shadow.
I'm going to take that same blue Take the warm gray 70. I'm mixing the three of them together. You get a soft shadow. blender going to take the black and try to redefine Give the edges some fur-like texture. Is fur-like a word? I don't know. Again, we want those edges, but we don't want outlines. That's where this blending tool comes in. I'm going to try to add some more of that blue in here.
I'm going to rework the ears a little bit, soften the edge. Now I'm putting on the finishing touches. A little more blending. redefine that troublesome foot And this is the point where we're trying to bring things forward or push it back. Just want to redefine some of the stripes. But keep that blue in. I'm liking the blue. And we're going to call that done. Hope you liked this video. If you did, uh, please hit the like button. Um, also, let me know if you want me to do more videos in this format. Thank you for watching.